Imagine a bright sunny day, the wind gently caressing your face as you revel in the excitement of a world-famous roller coaster ride. But suddenly, the atmosphere shifts. Screams pierce the air from behind you. Your heart races as you witness a horrifying sight. A teenager being ejected from the ride, his body soaring through the air like a football. Tragically, this nightmare unfolded for riders in Ohio back in 2017. Number 12. Fireball, Ohio. In 2017, the Ohio State Fair was plunged into chaos when the Fireball Ride, a staple attraction known for its exhilarating swings and spins, suffered a catastrophic malfunction. As the ride reached the peak of its arc, the unthinkable happened. A row of seats broke loose from the ride's structure, sending riders hurtling through the air. Among them was Tyler Jarrell, an 18-year-old who had enlisted in the Marine Corps. Tyler's excitement to experience the fair's thrill rides turned to horror, as the fireball's malfunction sealed his fate in a tragic twist of fate. As the row of seats detached, Tyler and his fellow passengers were thrown from the ride, their screams drowned out by the chaos unfolding around them. Witnesses described a harrowing scene of bodies crashing to the ground, limbs flailing in the air as gravity took hold. In an instant, Tyler's promising future was snuffed out, his dreams of military service shattered by the merciless malfunction of a fairground attraction. The aftermath of the accident was a scene of devastation and heartbreak. Emergency responders rushed to the scene, but for Tyler and others it was too late. Families were left reeling with grief, grappling with the sudden loss of loved ones in a tragedy that could have been prevented. See a man being flung from that tall, swinging carnival ride. That man died. Still too early to tell what happened, but the investigators are expected to be at the scene for much of the night looking into what went wrong. As investigations into the cause of the malfunction unfolded, authorities uncovered alarming evidence of corrosion and neglect, pointing to systemic failures in ride maintenance and oversight. His story, tragically cut short on that fateful day at the Ohio State Fair, echoed through communities far and wide, sparking calls for stricter safety regulations and accountability in the amusement industry. As fairgoers grappled with the horror of the fireball tragedy, Tyler's memory lived on as a poignant reminder of the preciousness of life and the need for vigilance in the face of danger. Number 11. Old Indiana Fun Park On August 11, 1996, horror struck at Old Indiana Fun Park. Emily Hunt endured a horrifying ordeal when a mini train derailed, leaving her paralyzed from the chest down, while her 57-year-old grandmother Nancy Jones was crushed amidst the screams and terror of the people at Old Indiana. Despite the tragedy, Emily found solace in art therapy, creating hauntingly beautiful works. Following the accident, Hunt made occasional public appearances alongside actor Christopher Reeve and participated in charity events and ballet performances. An investigation revealed that the train was hurtling far beyond its intended speed of 12 miles per hour. The ride operator claimed to have hit the brakes, but many were broken, missing, or disconnected. Most anti-derailment devices were absent and the speedometer and governor were busted. The track was strewn with broken parts. What's more horrifying is that the safety inspector, unqualified for the job, had checked the ride twice in the months leading to the tragedy. Can you believe it? What a sick joke. Records showed the train had derailed 79 times in just two months prior, and this wasn't old Indiana's first trouble. In 1996 alone, they violated child labor laws 77 times and faced allegations of animal abuse. In the top 10% of her graduating class at Brownsburg High School with big dreams for her future, the little girl paralyzed by an amusement park accident 15 years ago is now a young woman. A kiddie train at Old Indiana Fun Park jumped the track, killing her grandmother and leaving Emily paralyzed from the neck down. Number 10, Disneyland. On December 24, 1998, Disneyland was shaken by a tragic event that highlighted how profit outweighed safety concerns. The beloved sailing ship Columbia turned into a nightmare when a large metal object broke loose and plummeted, striking unsuspecting visitors below. Among the victims was Luan Phi Dawson, a 33-year-old Vietnamese native who tragically lost his life after being struck on the head. His wife, Liu Thuy Vuong, endured severe head injuries, requiring surgery for treatment. Additionally, Disneyland employee Christine Carpenter suffered serious leg injuries. That evening, Disneyland was full of screams and panic, leaving others fleeing in terror, opening another dark chapter for Disney. Following the accident, a disturbing truth emerged. 
Disneyland had prioritized cost-cutting over safety measures, putting lives at risk. The metal object meant to be securely fastened with a robust strap was instead held by a weak rope due to its cheaper cost. The aftermath of this grave error led to legal proceedings, with Luan Fai Dawson's family seeking justice. They were awarded a $25 million settlement, marking the largest compensation case in Disneyland's history. However, no amount of money could heal their wounds or bring back their loved ones. Today, the sailing ship Columbia serves as a haunting reminder of the consequences when profit triumphs over people's safety. While Disneyland is synonymous with fun, this tragedy serves as a sobering reminder that safety should always take precedence. Number 9. Thunder River Rapids In the shadows of Dream World, tragedy struck on that fateful day. Cindy Lowe, a vibrant mother of two, set out on a day of joy with her family, oblivious to the horror that lay ahead. As she boarded the Thunder River Rapids ride, anticipation filled the air, blending with the sounds of laughter from loved ones. However, the day took a devastating turn. Two men and two women lost their lives on the Thunder River Rapids ride at Dream World on the Gold Coast. Police Inspector Todd Reed confirmed the heartbreaking news, stating that a 42-year-old woman, a 38-year-old man, a 35-year-old man, and a 32-year-old woman had tragically perished. The ride started innocently, the gentle currents guiding the raft along the river. Then, disaster struck. A malfunction caused the raft to overturn violently, trapping Cindy and her companions beneath the churning waters. Despite frantic rescue efforts, it was too late. Cindy and three others lost their lives, and their dreams were shattered in an instant. The families were left grappling with unimaginable loss, haunted by memories of that day. Every time they closed their eyes, the image of their loved ones drowning haunted them, a pain unlike any other. Investigations uncovered negligence and disregard for safety protocols, contributing to this tragic loss of innocent lives. Dream World faced scrutiny, with management held accountable for their failures. But no amount of compensation could ease the pain of Cindy Lowe's untimely death and that of her fellow victims. We were told that we had to wait a minute because there was a bit of a maintenance problem, and I think there was people in the middle of the ride. Obviously, there were kids on board screaming while their mum was, like, trapped under. I'd rather not talk about what I saw. Number 8. Big Dipper The expression of terror on a little girl's face before her death will forever haunt Carolyn Adamsick's memory. She was a 14-year-old schoolgirl when the tragedy occurred at Battersea Park in 1972. The Big Dipper ride in South London malfunctioned while in operation, resulting in the deaths of five young children. Fortunately, Carolyn survived. Wooden roller coasters have earned a reputation as potentially deadly traps due to their quick wear and constant maintenance requirements. Even the slightest negligence can lead to a catastrophic event. As the train was being hoisted to the start of the ride, the haulage rope broke loose from one of the carriages, causing the mechanism to malfunction. With 31 passengers on board, Carolyn observed the train operator attempting to hit the brakes, only to find them non-responsive. Several carriages failed to navigate a turn, with one jumping the rails and crashing into a wooden fence. The train then collided with another train waiting in the boarding zone. People were hurled into the air like rag dolls as the roller coaster cars veered off course, smashing into one another with brutal impact. The smell of blood hung heavy in the air, mixing with the metallic tang of fear. The cries of the wounded pierced the night, a haunting reminder of the tragic event etched into the minds of all who bore witness to the horrifying spectacle. Following the crash, Carolyn and her friends found themselves trapped in a relatively intact carriage 15 meters above the ground. Tragically, five children lost their lives in the catastrophe, while 13 others sustained severe injuries. The roller coaster was never repaired and the Battersea Fun Fair was closed two years later. We were going up the hill and it suddenly stopped and it went down again and it went back the wrong way. I don't know what happened after that. Well, we went round the corner and we, the first carriage had just reached the top and then I think the cable broke. Well, there was a few people screaming, but then it was very quiet. The human element, faulty equipment or the mundane pursuit of profit over safety can often lead to deadly consequences. If this video has piqued your interest, please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Number 7. West Edmonton Mall In the bustling heart of West Edmonton Mall, where neon lights flash and happy music fills the air, something sinister lurks beneath the surface. Families and thrill-seekers swarm to the amusement park, all unaware of the chilling events about to unfold. Among them walked Rod Chaco, 
a young man filled with excitement and dreams of fun. Little did he know that his trip to the iconic Mindbender roller coaster would turn into a nightmare. As Rod climbed onto the Mindbender, his heart raced with anticipation. The ride promised thrills, but soon turned into terror. In a shocking twist of fate, the roller coaster went off track, its metal parts screeching against the rails. Rod's screams mixed with the sound of metal twisting as the coaster veered into darkness. Amidst the chaos, Rod found himself trapped in the wreckage, his body battered and bruised. The smell of fear hung thick in the air as he struggled to escape, surrounded by the cries of fellow riders. Covered in blood and bruises, Rod fought to stay alive, refusing to give in to despair. Rod Chaco was the only survivor in the last car of the Mindbender ride on June 14, 1986. The car had been traveling at about 100 kilometers per H when it struck a pillar, hurling its four passengers to the concrete floor below, while the other passengers were not as fortunate as Rod. The memories of screams and the smell of burning metal stayed with him, haunting his thoughts. Despite his physical wounds healing, the emotional scars ran deep, leaving him tormented by nightmares of the roller coaster's tragic descent. Chaco was the lone survivor of the Mindbender roller coaster crash at West Edmonton Mall. His legs crushed and nearly amputated, back, ribs, and pelvis all broken. His friends David Sager, Tony Mandrusiak, and Cindy Sims all died when the car they were riding in hit a pole and crashed to the ground. Number six, Wisconsin Dells. In a horrifying incident at Extreme World Adventure Park in Wisconsin Dells, Tegan Marty's innocent quest for adventure turned into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions. Entranced by the promise of exhilarating thrills, Tegan eagerly boarded the Terminal Velocity ride, unaware of the impending horror. However, the ride operator's fatal error shattered any semblance of safety, as Tegan was released before the safety net was in place, sending her hurtling to the concrete below. The impact left Tegan with devastating injuries, including a broken spine and pelvis, head trauma, and more. Doctors painted a bleak picture, warning of paralysis as she clung to life with the help of a ventilator, her once bright future now shrouded in uncertainty. As she fought for her life in the aftermath of the horrific plunge, Tegan's harrowing ordeal served as a chilling reminder of the grave dangers lurking behind the facade of amusement park attractions. Marty was only 12 years old when she fell from the top of this freefall ride at Extreme World in the Wisconsin Dells area. After several weeks at the hospital, Marty went back to Florida where she's from, still using a machine to help her breathe and unable to move either her arms or legs. Number five, Six Flags, Texas. In the shadowy depths of 2013, Six Flags over Texas became a stage for terror as Rosie Esparza met a bone-chilling fate aboard the Texas giant roller coaster. Despite her concerns about the safety belts, reassurance from the operator failed to avert a nightmare. In the heart-stopping twist of a sharp turn, Esparza's restraints gave way, propelling her daughter into a state of stunned terror as her mother was launched into the air. The sickening crunch of bone and the sickly smell of blood filled the air as Esparza's body crashed back to earth, shattering bones and tearing flesh. Onlookers recoiled in horror at the grisly sight of her mangled form a trail of blood and gore marking her tragic descent. Emergency responders arrived, but it was too late. Rosie's lifeless eyes stared into the void, her vibrant spirit extinguished in an instant. The tragedy cast a pall over the park, leaving visitors shaken to their core and haunted by the memory of Rosie's gruesome death. Investigations followed, but the ride soon resumed with promises of improved safety. Legal battles ensued casting a shadow over the incident and ending in a hushed settlement between Six Flags, Gerstlauer, and Esparza's family. Amidst the screams of delight and adrenaline-fueled thrills, the haunting echoes of Esparza's tragedy serve as a chilling reminder of the perilous line between excitement and terror in amusement parks. But if you think this was the most tragic incident at Six Flags, prepare yourself for an even more harrowing tale. Number 4. Six Flags, Georgia in 2015, tragedy struck at over Georgia. 17-year-old Asia Lashen Ferguson ignored warning signs and fences venturing into a forbidden zone beneath a roller coaster. Some say she chased a hat, others she aimed to prank riders. But fate intervened gruesomely. A speeding coaster carriage collided with Ferguson, severing her head instantly. The park closed the ride that day but reopened soon after, masking the horror beneath its thrills. This wasn't Six Flags' first accident. Ferguson's tale is a chilling reminder of the dangers lurking within amusement parks, a cautionary note amid the screams of excitement. 
Number 3. Darien Lake Amusement Park, New York In a harrowing turn of events at Darien Lake, the fate of former soldier James Hackamer took a tragic twist. James, 29 years old, was riding when he fell to his death Friday evening. A war veteran, he met a tragic end at Darien Lake Amusement Park in upstate New York. James, who had lost both legs in an explosion while serving in Iraq, harbored a simple wish to experience the thrill of a roller coaster ride. Despite his disabilities, James was determined to defy the odds and enjoy the simple joys of life. Hackamer had not been at the park since before he lost his legs in Iraq, the news reported. Family members said Ride of Steel was his favorite roller coaster, and they said Hackamer was very strong-willed and likely would have argued to get on the roller coaster if denied. However, tragedy struck when park employees struggled to secure a safety belt on James due to his condition. Placed in the first coach of the ride, James clung to the barrier in front of him with his hands, hoping to experience a fleeting moment of freedom. But as the coaster raced along at 80 kilometers per hour, disaster struck. James was ejected from his seat during a sharp turn, leaving his family and nephew, Ashton Lufford, to witness the horror unfold. Despite the operator's reassurances and James's sense of liberation, the ride ended in a devastating loss. State investigators later attributed the tragedy to a fatal mistake, highlighting the dangers of overlooking safety protocols. Disregarding the falsehoods aimed at shifting blame, it's clear that Mr. Hackamer was a hero. He lost both his legs serving his country and performing his job to the best of his abilities. Darien Lake failed to perform their job to the best of their ability, and that cost Mr. Hackamer his life. He deserved better. Please comment below RIP to show respect for him. Number 2. Icon Park, Orlando On March 24, 2022, 14-year-old Tyree Sampson went on a holiday outing with his football team at Icon Park in Orlando, USA. The excitement was palpable as they lined up for the Orlando Free Fall, the world's tallest drop tower. But what started as a fun day quickly turned into a nightmare just before everyone started screaming in terror. When Tyree slipped from his seat during the ride's descent, plummeting towards the ground below, with a horrifying thud he hit the hard pavement, his body twisted in pain as screams filled the air. An initial state investigation revealed that the seat Tyree was in, along with another seat, had been adjusted manually to fit larger riders. It was also confirmed that Tyree was 100 pounds over the maximum recommended weight for the ride. Later investigations revealed a chilling truth. A park employee had recklessly loosened Tyree's safety belt, causing him to fall to his death. The sight of Tyree's lifeless body shocked and traumatized everyone in the park. After Tyree's tragic death, both the Orlando Free Fall and the Orlando Slingshot nearby were closed indefinitely. The company responsible for the ride's design, Orlando Slingshot, stopped making this model, recognizing the urgent need for better safety measures. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, representing Tyree's father, demanded immediate changes to theme park safety rules to prevent similar horrors. He had reportedly been turned away from at least two other rides at the park because of his size. Weight, in my opinion, was absolutely a factor. He was not an appropriate fit for the device. Based on the investigation, uh, I think it may be that we will look at seat belts. So I think redundancy is a good thing. Number one, Space Journey, Fun Space, China. In 2007, tragedy struck at the Fun Space Indoor Amusement Park in China's Zhejiang province. While in Chinatown, east in Japan, the Space Journey roller coaster unfolded. A horrific accident marred the day for visitors at the Chinese park. Families, including children, had gathered for a day of joy and excitement, but their happiness turned to horror when a pendulum ride malfunctioned. This malfunction led to the deaths of six individuals and injuries to ten others. The screams of the injured and the mourning echoed through the park, shattering the atmosphere of fun and leaving behind a scene of devastation. The ride, known as the Space Journey, swung back and forth violently, reaching heights of up to 20 meters. But in a terrifying moment, the ride's main shaft suddenly broke, sending the passengers plummeting to the ground below. The impact was catastrophic, with screams filling the air as chaos erupted in the park. Rescue teams rushed to the scene, but the damage had already been done. Six individuals lost their lives in the tragic accident, their bodies lying motionless amidst the wreckage of the ride. Among the victims were children and adults alike, their lives cut short in a horrifying display of mechanical failure. As investigators combed through the scene, questions swirled about the safety protocols in place and the responsibility of the park's management. 
The incident sent shockwaves through the community, serving as a grim reminder of the dangers lurking behind the facade of amusement and entertainment.